Vous êtes prêts Hi everyone and welcome to our information session in international programs and bread baking at Ferrandi Paris. I'm Barbara, I'll be your host today, and I have the pleasure to have as a guest Chef Didier Chapu. How are you, Chef? Hello, Barbara, I'm very fine. <laughs> Hello, thank, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, Chef, and everyone at home. If you're watching us from abroad, feel free to write on the YouTube chat where you're watching us from. We love to see where people are coming from. We have international students coming from all over the place every year to join our programs. So before we start, we'll take a look at the, the index to see what we are going to talk today in this session. We have a little quick overview on the school, on Ferranti Paris, alumni and chefs. So in case you don't know much about the school, it's a way of understanding a little bit of the context of the programs. Um, then we will, <laughs> we will take a look in the content of the international programs in bread baking, the admissions process, the services you might find at Ferranti Paris, and of course the recipe you might be waiting for which is the apple turnovers, also known as Chaux en Pomme here in France. So Ferrandi Paris is a school that has more than 100 years old, so very traditional school in French gastronomy. It's known as the Harvard of gastronomy, which is a little funny. <laughs> we have five campuses here in France, more than 35 labs. We have application restaurants where students um, do their final projects and they serve real customers and we have about 4,000 more students every year. Chef, how long have you been working at Ferranti Paris? So I arrived uh, five years ago for the, crea the creation of the international program in bread baking. Uh, so I was, uh, I'm a baker now for 20 years. I work like a teacher for 15 years. Uh, so uh, before I was working with French students, with French adults who wanted to switch career, uh, and with uh, French young students like Advantiles. And so I uh, arrived uh, for the creation of the bread picking program uh, five years ago for a very, very nice challenge. Uh, and I'm I must say that it's a very, very good experience. The students are very, very nice, very, uh, with a high motivation, uh, with a very good mentality. So it's a very, very good experience. Thank you, Chef. And you can see some of our alumni in your screen. We have stellar chefs from Michelin star restaurant chefs to Latin America's best female chef. Um, it's also very international. As you can see, we have renowned chefs in India and France, in the US, so it's a great way of also meeting um, prestigious international chefs and of course, bread bakers, <laughs> who are exporting the French tradition and the expertise in bread and we'll be talking a little bit more of the bread baking programs in a bit. And if you continue to take a look at the, our uh, slides, you will also see other uh, more recent students uh, coming from different countries. We have Costas who's holding a bread. We have a fellow Brazilian, Thais Pacheco, who is also an entrepreneur. Many of our students, they actually come to Ferrandi because they have entrepreneurial goals. They want to go back home and open their own, either a bistro or a restaurant or even um, a bake, uh, bakery. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to meet other entrepreneurs and also learn from your colleagues and peers. Our chefs, instructors, as Chef Didier mentioned, usually have at least 10 years of professional experience in the industry, so they really know what they're talking about. And they're also coming from prestigious institutions all over the world. So not only in France, they have international experience and they're also trained here to train you. That's one of the biggest advantages. Sometimes people can learn a lot uh, by doing and not necessarily, they're not necessarily able to, um, to teach others. So here we teach our teachers to train you and have the best pedagogical approach for when you come join the program. Um, now we will get into the bread baking programs specifically, uh, which was designed by Chef Didier as well. Uh, we have two kind of programs uh, in bread baking uh, for our international students, as you can see on your screen. We have um, 
one program that is more for food enthusiasts, you know, someone like me who loves eating, maybe wants to learn, you know, the basics and have two weeks, uh, maybe of vacations that they want to do a training. So they come to Perandi Paris, they learn with Chef Didier, the basic techniques, they start, you know, doing some um, traditional recipes. Yeah, so we're working, working on the very most well-known and very famous Viennoiserie and bread. So of course we are making baguettes and croissants. We uh, discover uh, the technique of sourdough bread and how to adjust a little bit the flavor of, uh, of sourdough bread. And we try also to make fan some fancy products. To, uh, so we transform, as you can see on the screen, the croissant. So we make bicolor croissant filled with different stuff. So just things. Uh, we, we see the, the, the most important and the most famous products and we try yes, to transform them to in a fancy way with easy and, f and fast technique that you can apply at home also. And uh, for the introduction programs, these two week programs, do you people need to have any kind of experience or they can just be enthusiasts, you know? No, it's really dedicated for people who want to discover uh, the world of bakery. They can, they can have some, uh, some experience. Sometimes we have people who uh, make bread or even are professional baker, but maybe in a, in a country where we don't make baguettes. So mm. they, are, they can make, for example, that we had students from Lebanon who were used to make uh, pita and flatbread, but mm -hmm. they didn't know really how to do, uh, how to do a, a French baguette. Uh, we had some some bakers who are more also who have more um, experience on bread and they want to uh, learn how to make croissant mm -hmm. and so they don't want to make to take a long program they don't have the time because they have a bakery to manage uh, so in this case just two weeks at school that can be interesting for them to uh, to learn but it's really open to uh, people with no experience as uh, um, we re we restart really from the beginning. Uh, so it's already open to, to everybody. That's great to hear. I know that once I lived um, abroad and then I came to France and I started eating bread everywhere and then I went back to my home country and the bread is not like here in France. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know I become sad because it's not the same. So I know you guys take it very seriously and I'm happy to hear that you can welcome anyone without experience to the introduction programs because it's really something else right here. It's, it's a whole new level. <laughs> but we also have the intensive professional programs mm -hmm. in uh, bread baking. So for people who want to have um, a career uh, as a bread baker or want to have a more professional training, mm -hmm. can you tell, tell us a little bit more of that program? What kind of background do the students have? It's a 16-week program, so what should they expect for the training in terms of the techniques, the Alors, for during this 16 weeks program, we see all the products we can have, we can make in a traditional French bakery. So, of course, we uh, make back, we make the, the star, the star products of the bakery. So we make croissants. Croissant, we're gonna we're gonna go very far in the explanation, and we're gonna see many different techniques and tricks to make exactly the baguettes and the croissant you like. A lot of people think that bakery is simple because we make a recipe with just four or five ingredients. Mm -hmm. But actually, there's a, just with these four and five ingredients, there's a lot of different possibilities to make uh, different texture, to make different flavor, and depending on your country, um, maybe someone will prefer, some customer will prefer soft baguette with the, with the crust so soft and not too hard. Maybe someone, some customer will prefer something more crusty. So uh, we, we, we see uh, a lot of different techniques just to make these products. After we make a long time, we work a long time on sourdough breads because that's a big tendency in France and all around the world. So we explain the same thing, a lot of different uh, techniques and stuff to make uh, exactly the sourdough breads you like. Uh, we are. We explain also how to make international products. Mm -hmm. So we make ciabatta, we make focaccia, we make schwarzbrots, bretzels, bagels, uh, and we try also to transform these products to make fancy products. Mm -hmm. uh, so to play with the spices, with herbs, with uh, natural coloring, to try to twist a little bit the product and to make it a little bit more funny. Uh, we make a little bit of snacking also because it's a big part of the activity on the bakery. So we uh, uh, and 
for the snacking, the base is the bread. So we transform uh, our bread and we try to, to, uh, to transform them into three-star Michelin uh, products. So we work, we have the chance here at Ferrandi so to work with very good uh, cuisine chef. So uh, they share their experience and so my students pass few days with, uh, with a cuisine chef to learn the, also the basic of cuisine to, uh, to have good bases to, uh, to work and to make uh, good snackings. We make also a lot of uh, different kind of viennoiserie mm -hmm. with, di uh, with different fillings. So we make a lot of different uh, Danish. We make a lot of different uh, products like cinnamon rolls with uh, cardamom buller. So we are really uh, open-minded on the tendons also on, uh, on the viennoiserie. Bakery, the bakery tendons change very, very quickly. And so we try to be really at the, at the point of the, of the tendons for the, for the bakery. I think that's uh, super good because this way you keep updated to the trends and what's being fashionable and, and you know, the new marketing as well coming into the business. Um, one question I have, do students need to have previous experience as well to join the intensive or they can come just because they have a big interest and the career goals? Uh, there's no uh, there's no level required okay so uh, even big beginners can come and uh, and learn how to make bread uh, what is required actually what is mandatory it's motivation it's a long program uh, so it's a 16 weeks at school and after it's completed by uh, an internship of two months in a real bakery where they're gonna discover the real world uh, so uh, of course they have to love what they will do. They have to like what uh, to do bread, to do viennoiserie. So yes, you have to to try before to come and to have a little bit of experiments of experience at home eventually. Uh, just try to have to make some bread, some uh, some viennoiserie at home. And if you have this motivation, if you have al already discovered this magic to make something with your hand and to see the transformation of a dough in a, br in a bread in a croissant, of course you can come at Ferrandi and we're gonna explain everything to be um, to allow you to be successful at any time. That's great. Can you tell us what is a typical day in the intensive program? What time do the students start? What time do they finish? What should they expect in terms of um, rhythm of classes? Uh, we know that in the intensive programs, in case you guys don't know, we also have oenology classes, French classes for those who don't speak French. Uh, we have the art uh, creativity mm -hmm. class. Um, so what is a typical day for an intensive uh, student? Alors, very often we have a class session in the morning, so it can be technology, it can be art, it can be a French class. Uh, alors, for my aspect, uh, we have two classes of technology per week, where we explain the new recipes, and so we explain all the technical points on the recipe, uh, why do we use these ingredients, how we incorporate these ingredients, the tricky points on the recipe more theory. Exactly, exactly. And we have a second class where we explain all the, the, all the theory actually. So we're going to speak about the different raw materials, the difference between the uh, different appellation of flour, what does it change if I had a little bit more water in my, in my recipe, why is it important to control the temperature, how to control the fermentation, etc. Et so I think the most important to be successful after in your country is not to be to work like a robot, but really to understand what happens in, in your dough. The processes. Exactly. exactly. So but when you make bakery, you make biology and chemicals, actually. Uh, so if you understand what uh, happen in your dough, but you're gonna be able to uh, adapt the recipes in your own country because in your country, the raw materials will be different, the flour will be different, the weather will be different, yeah. and the, the humidity, and the humidity, the the, the heat, and so it's very important to be able to adapt the the recipe and the process to be uh, successful, even if uh, if the raw materials and the condition of work is, is uh, are different. And after, in the afternoon, we have a session of six hours of lab, okay? Uh, to make bread, it takes a long time. 
and it's not possible to make a session of four, four, or five hours, six hours. Uh, that's the minimum class we can uh, we can do. Um, and when they and very often we prepare the dough for the day after. And we wor we are working on fermentation, so it's always it's like for to make good wine or to make good cheese. The longer the fermentation, the sorry, the, uh, the longer the fermentation is, the better the product will be. So uh, we, we work really on long fermentation, so very often we prepare the dough the day one and we're going to finish the process the day two to have a really product with a very good flavor and, uh, and with a long preservation. So very often we begin in the day by to bake, we begin to bake the products we prepared the day before, and after we prepare once again product for the day after, like in a real bakery actually. That's yeah. great. It's uh, preparing them for the real life in a bakery. Exactly, exactly. We don't. We are not. Uh, my students are really ready when they leave the school to do their internship. They know all the techniques and the organization of uh, tra of a traditional bakery, uh, and they know also how to organize their work. That means in bakery, what is difficult also, it's to avoid. We work with time of fermentation for each recipe. So the, what is difficult also is to organize the timetable mm -hmm. to have every every time something to do, but not never three or four do to work at the same time. So the, we we learn also how to organize the timetable to uh, have yes a good organization all along the day to never be in the rush and to respect the, the also the rhythm of the do. And um, so this is a 16 weeks program with the optional. Uh, pre months internships that could be re renewed once, so mm -hmm. can even be six months. Um, and I know that during the program, the students also go on a study trip. Yeah. We were even talking uh, earlier about it. Mm -hmm. um, so what should they expect for the study trip? Uh, what do you guys do when you go to some region in, in France? So, you, we, so during the study trip, so during three days, we visit uh, a very beautiful part of France <laughs> every time. Uh, and so the study trip is focused about gastronomy and culture. Okay, so we can visit uh, some producers, some farmers, some uh, um, some factory. Very very interesting. So that can be that always link with our work. Okay, so we can fi find visit uh, uh, people who may prepare butter. Uh, we can uh, visit meal. We can visit. Um, oysters farm, for example, for cooking chef or uh, uh, people who produce uh, citrus for pastry chef, etc., etc. We uh, so we can have we can visit also museum. We can uh, visit the museum about the, the story of this place, or we can go to the famous painter uh, because there's also a lot of in inspiration also mm -hmm. you know, to take from the culture. Uh, to make new products in our in our, in our work, uh, and or, and we discover also gastronomy with uh, very good restaurants. So it's a very nice time with the students, uh, and it's a very nice way to uh, end the program and to. Uh, uh, so we have a lot of conviviality and uh, and a very very good time. Awesome, and I like that you mentioned visiting even like museums because one of the things that I've noticed here at Ferranti is that in addition to this hands-on approach in which students go to the kitchen or to the lab all day and they, you know, they really cook and bake every every day for hours and hours because that's how we really learn and mm -hmm. get ready for the real life but you are also fostering creativity all the time yep. you know i know that in the art classes sometimes they talk about picasso and all these kadinsky and painters to mm -hmm. ins get inspired about shapes and forms so I, that's probably one of my favorite things of, uh, of our intensive professional program mm -hmm. And I know that after this testimony about the, the study trip, everyone is, who is watching this on YouTube is looking forward to apply. So 
Guys, just a reminder, there is a YouTube chat and we will be doing Q&As after the, the recipe um, Chef Didier prepared for us of the apple turnover. So if you have questions, feel free to write on the YouTube chat. We'll try to address as many as possible. But now, how can you apply to either the introduction to the fundamentals of bread baking or to the intensive professional program in bread baking? Well, if we take a look at your screen, you can see it's not a mystery. Um, we have some um, very specific um, processes and documents for each program. For the introduction, there is an application that you need to fill. Um, there is a, inside the application a question about your motivation. We are curious to learn if you are coming because you know, you're a food enthusiast or if you're already doing some home baking. Um, we have, um, of course, a minimal level of English that is required. Um, this is important because we want to make sure that you are able to communicate with the chef, understand the instructions, and of course, everything related to the theory classes as well. Um, your CV, so we can learn more about you, and you know, a copy of your passport. So very straightforward. You can send your application by email to us. You will have our contact information by the end of this presentation. And for the intensive professional programs, we ask um, an additional uh, document, uh, including a letter of motivation, super important. As Chef Didi mentioned, you guys have to be motiva motivated. It's a very intense program. You'll be studying and working for hours. So we want to make sure that your goals and expectations are aligned to what the program can offer you. We also have application fees, since it, the, pro the application process is a little bit different. It includes a selection interview in which you'll be talking to one of our team members and explaining why you're applying to Ferranti, to this program, what is your professional goals, your motivation, and um, we'll do an admissions panel. Um, so there is a, an application fees, and then um, the, both processes are bullying admissions, so you can apply at any time as long as there is availability. We have one intake for the introduction to the fundamentals of bread baking program, which is in June here in Paris. And for the intensive professional program, we have two intakes, February and August. And if you're interested, you can join us perhaps in August. And now I know the moment has arrived. You will watch Chef Didier in action doing the amazing Chausson aux pommes, apple turnovers. So stay there, you'll be able to watch it, and we'll see you soon for questions and answers. Si votre micro est coupé, vous pouvez parler. Alors, on va quand même attendre deux secondes, mais non, non. Hello everyone. Welcome at Ferrandi. I'm Didier Chapu. I'm a bakery chef at Ferrandi Paris. And I manage the international <laughs> program in bread baking. Yeah. So what the recipe we're going to make today is a croissant dough. But we won't make traditional croissant. We're going to make a filled viennoiserie. Because we're going to use this croissant to make a little pocket filled with caramelized pear. And with on the top, we're going to add a little crumble to add something more crusty uh, and to mix a different texture, softness, crispiness, and uh, crustiness. So to start, we're going to make the croissant détrempe. So the détrempe is the name of the dough before to put the butter and to begin to make the layers. Alors, to make the détrempe, what we need is milk. So we're going to use 90% of water and 10% of milk powder. Like that, you will have a perfect milk, hein, the same quality of milk, but just it's easier for us to manage and to have always a good temperature. So to begin, we put the water. So cold water at three degrees. We're gonna mix two types of flour, one bread flour and one strong flour named gruyou. So 50% of each. We use sugar, salt, yeast, and a little bit of butter. Okay. We're gonna start slow gear, five minutes to combine all the ingredients together. So we are mixing the dough for five minutes now, so we're gonna check the quality of the mixing. 
So as you can see, the texture of the dough is quite firm and to make beautiful layers of the croissant, if the dough is too soft, there's a real risk to combine the dough with the butter. So it's better to have a dough a little bit firm. So you see, I roll out. I try to keep a dough a little bit thicker at the end, like that. It will help me to have square angles. So I try to roll this dough a little bit thicker to the corner. Okay, so I start from the middle and I go to the side. So 30 centimeters. Okay, so I am 32, so I can re retract a little bit by 20. And I will cover the dough. Huh? So we always let put a plastic on the dough to protect the dough from the hair to avoid a dehydration. Okay, so just after the end of the kneading, we try to put the dough or in the fridge if you have a long time, or in the freezer if you want to work uh, more quickly. The dough is very cold now, huh? not frozen once again, but very, very cold. And you see there's absolutely no fermentation. So that's the perfect texture we need to make a perfect layers. So now we're gonna begin to make the layer, to build the layers. So I prepared a butter with a good dimension. So we say that we need a dough at 30 by 20 because we had a piece of butter 15 by 20. Alors, now I will just fold the two edges to the center. Uh, so had we made a good geometric shape, you see you don't have to pull, you don't have to correct anything. A little bit of flour under the dough, a little bit of flour on the surface, and we're gonna tra start to roll out. Alors the first little trick also to roll out a dough thick is sometimes it's difficult. So what you can do to begin is to press on the dough like that to heat softly. So always from the center to the edges. So we can finish to roll out. So the objective is to have a dough with a length of 60, 70 centimeters. So the objective is to multiply the number of butter by four. Alors, to do that, we're gonna make two folds. So I fold one edge to the center, the second edge to the center. I just make a kiss, you see? When this operation is done, I will try to restart but never in the same direction, okay? So the dough was, I worked the dough in this way the first time, so this time I will make a quarter turn and I will work the dough in this direction. Alors, I will press on the bottom and on the top to stick the layers together. Otherwise, very often when you will begin to work with your rolling pin, the top layers will roll out more quickly than the other. The objective is not to have a dough too long, so the size of your rolling pin is very good, huh? 40, 50 centimeters. The objective is just to have a dough a little bit thinner. A thinner dough uh, will get cold more quickly. We're gonna start to divide and to cut squares, squares of 12 centimeters of side. So we will begin like that. So do not hesitate huh, to cut the edges, huh? because the edges are not very, very beautiful. To try to cut properly, huh? so the head of the knife, of the knife, and the body of the knife, in one moment, like that. Alors, after we're gonna make the little chausson, so the little pocket. Alors, we're gonna put water on the bottom and on the side of our squares. In this mark, we're gonna put some 
caramelized pears. And we're gonna fill this little viennoiserie with paper. And now we can fold our little pockets. Yeah. And before the second fermentation, we're gonna brush one coat of egg wash. Alors, the egg wash will make a golden and shiny color on the surface. After one hour and a half of fermentation, our products are ready to go to the oven. So we can see, you see here in the layers, we have little holes, little gaps. Okay, so that's the perfect time to begin the baking. I prepared a little crumble. Huh? So crumble is an easy recipe. That's the same quantity of butter, of flour, of almonds powder and of sugar. And we're gonna spread our crumble on the surface of the little pockets. The products are ready to be baked, so we're gonna bake in the stone deck oven at 200 degrees for 20 minutes. So we are at the end of the baking and of the cooling of the products. So now we can have a look on the product. So just to uh, increase a little bit the contrast of coloration, we put, we sieved a little bit of icing sugar on the surface. It's not an obligation, it's up to you. Huh? So we're gonna cut one product to see inside. Okay, so you see the, the peers just a little bit, uh, just in a state of compote and not too, uh, not too melty. Uh, and the texture of crumb here, very, very soft. The, the compote also very soft. The surface of the dough, very flaky. And the crumble, a little bit more drier, so a little bit, a little bit crusty. Okay, so like that, you have a, a perfect uh, contrast of texture and a very, very original viennoiserie for your shop or for your breakfast. Welcome back everyone. We hope you enjoyed this video. I know some of our viewers are asking for the full recipe, so don't worry. You probably see on your screen a QR code. You can scan it with your mobile and you get the full video of Chef Didier in action for these Apple turnovers. And we we'll also be reaching out to you if you had signed up, otherwise contact us. But we we'll also be reaching out to you next week with the written recipe so you can know exactly the measures and all the details if you want to try to make these apple turnovers at home. So now we'll do the Q&A. So if you guys have questions, I know we got several of them in, uh, during the video. We'll start addressing them now. So first question to Chef Didi. Chef, there is uh, one of our students asking if he wants, um, if he wants to learn pastry and he also wants to learn uh, bread baking. When he comes to Ferrandi, because in the bread baking they have a module on viennoiserie, mm -hmm. which also overlaps with pastry. So, what kind of viennoiserie do they learn in the intensive professional program? Uh, we develop really more the, uh, the viennoiserie module in bakery, in bread baking, than in, than in pastry. Pastry, there's just one week where they're gonna learn croissant, pain au chocolat, kuglof, but they're gonna have the opportunity to make just maybe one or two times each of them. Uh, we're gonna develop really more this uh, this module. We're gonna make several times croissant, pain au chocolat with different pre-fermentation. So just, uh, sometimes just with yeast, sometimes with poulish, sometimes with sourdough, so to enhance the, the, the crispiness, the texture, the preservation of the product. And we're gonna make a lot of different products that they don't see in, uh, in pastry. Uh, so we're gonna develop a lot of the viennoiserie with fillings, so uh, with this kind of danish. Uh, so we're gonna see different kinds of creams. Can, mm -hmm. We can use 
before baking, after baking, a different feeling with fruits also, how to cook a fruit to make a beautiful and good viennoiserie, a different technique of toppings also. We're gonna work on different, as you can see, you saw on the, on the apple turnover, but we make different kind of crumble, of trouser, of uh, nougat tins, or things a little bit caramelized to, uh, to enhance the flavor of the, of the viennoiserie. So it's uh, it's uh, really more rich uh, in uh, uh, in, bake, in bread baking programs than in pastry programs. And uh, we had a specific question say in France, are viennoiseries traditionally made by boulanger ou pâtissier? Uh, that depends of the shop. <laughs> that depends. Alors, in France, the guy who prepares the viennoiserie, the name is a tourier. And Tourier has to uh, have knowledge in pastry and in bakery. So uh, the bakery, normally the definition of the bakery, that's the product with fermentation. So if we put yeast, if, we, if you had sourdough in the recipe, that's more on the side of, uh, of, a, of a baker. But the, this Tourier will has also to prepare some tarts, some quiche, some brioche. So that's a the tourier has a little bit of pastry knowledge to have and also uh, bread baking. So it's a uh, tourier, it's, um, it's a work made by bakers and also pastry chefs. Mm, interesting, I never heard of that word. I'm not sure I can pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a different question about the introduction programs this time. Uh -huh. Does the short program include theory classes too? Yes, Alors, every morning we take a time for 30 minutes to explain the recipe, to uh, explain what we're going to do, uh, and to explain also the, so the tricky points of the recipe. Okay, so there's a, it's not just a manual, uh, man, enfin, it's important Practical. to under, yeah, exactly. It's important to understand what we're going to do together. Uh, so yes, we take a little bit of time. Uh, at the beginning of the course, the first uh, hours, we explain the difference between the different flours. We make some experiments also to, uh, to understand what is the gluten, what is starch, what is the, the difference between a pastry flour, a viennoiserie flour, a bread flour. So yes, we take uh, every morning, we're going to have a little points on technology and theory to explain the recipe and uh, on which uh, step of the process we're going to be to be very careful uh, and yes we, we, we explain also the basics also of, uh, of the theory of uh, about bread and, and, <laughs> and for both programs do they get the recipes before uh, they get the recipe at the beginning of the course okay, okay. so you have at the beginning of the course you have all the recipe and you have all the theory uh, supports so uh, you don't have to wait to see and to speak about uh, to speak about all topics in particular with the chef if you're interested and if you want to uh, to go further mm -hmm. uh, but you can read all the support everything is responding uh, is uh, you have that on a, in a binder uh, if you prefer the support in a to read uh, yes, yeah, in a booklet uh, and you're gonna uh, you're gonna have that also online, so uh, you can you have all the resources uh, free for you. <laughs> so guys, do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is: What is bread flour in France? Is it T65? Alors T65 is one of the flour we use. Uh, T65, it's uh, not a very white flower, it's not a brown flower, it's a little bit yellow, creamy uh, color. Uh, so we, and, uh, during the course, we're gonna use a lot of different kinds of flower. T65 is just uh, one of the, it's probably one of the one we're gonna use the more, more. but uh, we use T45, T55, T80, T110, T150, rice, pelt, einkorn, so we have a lot of different bread and we use a lot of different flowers. Okay. I think that's super French and that's mm -hmm. also why you guys are famous for the best fr uh, bread in the world mm -hmm. because when I mean, I grew up with only flour as flour. <laughs> I would go to the supermarket, I would only see one 
kind of flower. So even today, after six years in France, I go to the supermarket and I see all these teas and I'm like, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> so I'm glad you can explain a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but we explain also uh, what, what is in uh, the technology of this flower and how they can find the good flower or maybe how they can mix two different quality of flower in their country to make their own, uh, own mix to make uh, to have the same quality of flowers than in France. So this is great. Um, we have more questions. So sorry guys if I look up, it's because I have a big screen you can't see with the questions. Um, what is the difference between uh, the Fondamento de la Boulangerie Artisanale program, which is a French uh, language program here at Ferrandi Paris, mm -hmm. and the introduction to the fundamentals of uh, bread baking? Hello. Uh, yes, is it the language? Uh, one is in French, <laughs> one is in English. But uh, in the French program, we just do bread. We don't have viennoiserie. Okay. Uh, so the viennoiserie is uh, set in another program uh, of five days. Uh, so during these two weeks uh, programs in French, we just make bread. Okay. And uh, in, uh, international, so in the introduction to the fundamentals in bread baking, we mix both bread and vinaigre. Interesting. I didn't know that, so I'm <laughs> also learning here. <laughs> so uh, one of the questions we have, is it just French bread or different breads? And you mentioned earlier you also do ciabatta, focaccia, mm -hmm. so also at least some Italian... Uh, bread. Um. So we do uh, well, in the long program, in, uh, intensive. in intensive program, we do international bread, but the international bread we can find in France. Okay, so um, we can make uh, yes, or, uh, there's a lot of influence from Italy uh, and north of Europe, and so we're gonna make. Uh, uh, yes, some bread with um, rye flour, like in Germany, Norway, Switzerland. Uh, for the snacking program, we can also uh, create, uh, use different uh, origin for, for bread. Uh, after, we have also the creativity program, where the students have to create one bread. And in this case, man, they, can, uh, they can learn if they, if they want, if they are interested by this, uh, this kind of bread, but we can work together to develop a recipe for them. Okay, so we know uh, how to make breads uh, in another way. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have time to show everything, of course, during four months, so we are focused on the, of what we can find in a, in a French bakery. But during this uh, creativity program, that, that's the opportunity also to uh, go for head and to, to, to see something and to work on recipe we don't have time to develop during the program. Interesting. And we have a question that I actually get a lot when I'm talking to prospect students. Um, it's about the internship. Can you explain to us a little bit of the internship, internship placement? How does it work? Do the students find by themselves a, a, an internship? I don't know. During the first days, I give uh, to the students a list of good bakeries that they can visit uh, with different topics. We know that some bakeries are more uh, specialized on sourdough, some are more specialized on viennoiserie, some are more specialized on snacking. Um, so I list, I give them a list, a list of bakeries and of also hotel and palace where they can eventually apply for internship. Uh, and very quickly, uh, we try to speak about that with the students. Uh, we try to uh, explain, um, well, we're gonna explain very quickly uh, what they will learn during their internship. So it's important, it's a good complement of the formation because uh, in, uh, during four months, uh, we see a lot of recipes. Uh, and the internship, it's really the opportunity to be really more focused on the products they want to master absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely well. So it's important to choose a good place for internship. So we speak a lot and we have a lot of, uh, of uh, chat with the students to uh, try to find the best place for them. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and yes, so that uh, we 
use our network, the, the network of the chef, uh, to organize this internship, and the students don't, don't have to uh, knock on the door of the bakery to ask. Uh, so we, we organize the, the, the internship. Uh, during the French course, they will uh, learn also how to write a resume in French, how to write a letter of motivation, how to uh, uh, how to answer during during an interview. So yes, we so help th we help them really to be ready for this uh, for this internship. That's great to hear because that's definitely one of the things we get asked the most. It's about the internship. Yeah. And, yeah, and so we, uh, all the chefs are work for Ferrandi for a long time now. We have a lot of, uh, experience, uh, of experience for the internship. So we know the good places, the good bakeries, the good restaurants, the good pastry chef, uh, the good pastry shop where uh, the work is interesting, where the chefs are kind and take time to explain uh, stuff to the students. So uh, we have very often good, uh, it's a very, always a good experience for the students, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and do they meet other bread bakers when they're doing the intensive program or even the fundamentals? Do they see um, some chefs in action as well? Alors, in, during the intensive uh, program, we have three guest chefs wow. who come uh, during the program. So they can be MOF, they can be... Uh, do you guys know what MOF is? Maybe, Chef, Alors, do you want to explain? MOF, it's uh, literally it's Meilleur Ouvrier de France. So that's the most prestigious uh, diploma and um, you can Bio. have in France. Yeah. Okay, It's uh, a competition organized every four years. So it's a little bit the Olympic Games of the, of the bakery. <laughs> uh, and so you have to master, to, to have this title, you have to master absolutely everything of the bakery. So that's the, the cream of the cream of, uh, of, uh, of the bakers. Um, so uh, yes, we can work with, uh, with MOF, who spend uh, two or three days with us to show uh, viennoiserie, bread, snacking, that depends on the, of the topic. That can be chef from very prestigious bakery or palace in Paris, so we can work with the chef of the Ritz, of the Georges V, etc. Uh, or that can be people who work for millers too, because they have a very good knowledge of uh, what what happens and the new tendency of in of the course. in the French bakeries. So uh, we, yes, we we use also our network to find uh, the right guests. Uh, exactly. And I have a very funny story about MOF because uh -huh. when I first moved to to France, my French wasn't that good. So I would read everywhere Meilleur Ouvrier de France, uh -huh. even for chocolate stores, for uh -huh. you know uh, bread baking bakeries. And I I would say Ouvrier isn't that the wor the person who does like work? I don't understand. <laughs> so after a while, understand. Should. And it's actually easy to tell who is an MOF because they have the colors of France here in, in their vest. So yeah. that's how I identify them. So if you ever have a question, if you're wondering, just try to see if they have the French flag in their neck. Exactly. <laughs> So we have a new question about deadlines for the introduction program in June. So as I mentioned earlier, we have rolling admissions but limited availability. Especially, you know, we have such an amazing chef, so everyone <laughs> wants to be a student of Chef Didier. <laughs> uh, but I would say you can apply by early May, since the program starts at the end of June. That would still be okay, but of course the sooner the better, more available spots there are. Uh, so, last question, Chef Didier, for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, this is a great question that we also uh, get asked a lot. After finishing the intensive program in uh, bread baking, can I go back to my home country and have the right skill sets to open a bakery? Actually, yeah. You have uh, a lot of uh, students who open a bakery in their home country. Uh, we have uh, uh, 12 students who are in six years who already open uh, bakeries uh, in Greece, in Mexico, in uh, Belarus, in the uh, United States, in India, uh, with a lot of different uh, organizations of, uh, of business. Some are, have 
really open a French bakery in their country, and we can find exactly the same product than, uh, than in a French bakery. bakery. Some uh, has uh, like a dark kitchen when they make just croissants, they make deliveries. Uh, so yes, there's a lot of different uh, types of, uh, of uh, business, but, uh, but yes, there are, uh, there are, we have a lot of students who open their own business and, uh, and they are all successful. <laughs> That's great to hear. Um, we have a question about online classes. Either at programs, either the introductions or the intensive, do they have online classes or it's really here full time? Yeah, no, it's full time on the class. It's really hard to learn how to cook online, I would say. Yeah. I tried that, I made a mess in my kitchen, so I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can watch Chef Didier and our amazing Ferrangi chefs doing master classes quite often. We have a YouTube channel, we probably found it. Uh, you can see some previous recipes with them. We try to do them as much uh, as possible. So um, hopefully you'll find some interesting recipes and also get the motivation to come here uh, in Paris and join us for one of the trainings we offer. Um, finally, last question, as I know we're running out of time. Um, is there an age limit for the internships? No. No, no, uh, there's no uh, or for age, the program. There's no age limit. What is important once again is to have the motivation. And to be over 18. <laughs> <laughs> and to be over 18. Uh, after for the internship, but we try to find, as we say, the good uh, place for you. A good matching. Exactly. So we know that uh, in some uh, bakeries it's more intense. In some bakeries it's less intense. Mm -hmm. So depending also of uh, of the feeling of. of mm -hmm. Yeah. The, of the students with this aspect, but we try to, to, to find a good place where, where people will gonna have a, a good comfort of work. Uh, we know that some, some, there are some pressure, more pressure in some bakeries, less pressure in other bakeries. So uh, we try to organize that in a good way. Um, and we try also to, when they make, the students make the interview, I try to be there to mm -hmm. speak with the, uh, with the owner. And so we try to really have, a, uh, to explain everything and to have a real, uh, real interview where the, the student is able to explain their uh, goals. attempts, mm -hmm. its goals. Uh, so that's very important actually to, to, uh, to organize a good internship. Uh, at the beginning is to uh, be able to really create a, a close relationship. Yeah. between the chef, the students, and the, and the bakery where the, we go, we're going to organize the internship. Absolutely. I think it's very important that expectations and goals are aligned and yeah. that everything's clear. Yeah. That's how they can really get closer to their ultimate goals and become the baker of their dreams. Exactly. That's the base <laughs> of all good relationships, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef DJ. It's been a pleasure learning more about our programs with you. Thank you very much, Barbara. It was a pleasure. And Speak thank you, you, everyone who's watching. In case you still have questions, don't worry. You see our contact information in your screen. You can reach us by email, by telephone. Feel free. I'm Barbara. I'll be more than happy to assist you in joining our beautiful school for Andy Paris. Have a great weekend. If you're watching this at evening in Asia, good night. If you're watching this in the U.S. or my home country, Brazil, enjoy your day. Thank you and see you soon.